Hey, Der Larsen here. The following tutorial is part of my newly released Joyrise Thai Bass House Start to Finish Masterclass. And it is going to be about the most basic bass sound that every bass house producer should know, because it is very, very simple, but at the same time, it's very effective. So if you want to check the full masterclass, check the description. And now let's jump into it. Let's put some very simple basses here. Square basses, basically. So let's open a new MIDI track and again Serum, this is going to be really really simple using analog basic shapes, let's turn it to square wave, add 7 voices of unison, pull back the detune a little and let's use a filter like low 6, so it doesn't need to be very drastic, but we definitely want to use some punch in the beginning of the sound. So let's turn the decay to about 90 milliseconds. Boom. This is what we get now. Okay, this is still not very pleasing, but let's use some effects to make it even better. So let's use a low pass feeder, MG low 18. And with an LFO in trigger mode, we can make it a little more interesting. Okay, but this is still not enough, not a compression. I wanted to add an equalizer to make the sound a little more interesting. So let's crank up the low end. And let's add a little more middles. And one more thing, we need to go to the metrics, select envelope 2 and add some pitch band to it, like 2 octaves. something like this and in this case I think we need to go to the global tab and pull back the width so we don't have any stereo width for this bass sound okay I think this sound will be great it's not complicated as I said but we still need to add some saturation like again the bit warmer preset you can crank it up to even higher like around 10 decibels and an EQ to fine-tune those highs a little because they are they are a little too much. Yeah, that's it. And maybe the middle bass is a little. Okay, this is cool. Now let's add the midis. Let's start with a little higher frequency, like F1. And drop it down to A sharp zero, sorry. Now there is one more thing I want to do here is uh, some manual sidechain. Now obviously on the group, on the full bass group, you can add manual sidechain, but I like to fine tune my sidechaining. So this is why I am adding several different sidechains on different bases. Because, for example, the main bass had a lot longer sidechain effect, but this one should have a little shorter. So I think this is a good idea to fine tune your sidechains and not use only one. So this is why I want to use the output of the saturation plugin. This is a little too long. And this is a little too short. I think this is fine. We can copy this thing, but uh, let's do a little different MIDI. So let's start with C sharp 1. Let's go to F sharp 0. Oops, but not here. Oops, now this is the problem. Okay, so let's go to the siren, the siren effect, 
And let's add some manual three dot little automation for the pitch envelope. Okay, this is cool. And we have another problematic thing, this base pad here. Okay, cool. And if we are here, we can add the siren to the drop too. So let's drop it here. Maybe there is one more thing we can do with this square bass. So let's use the same bass sound to this section to fill up this section. Now, for that, I think we need to use some low pass filtering. So something like this. You know, when we get here, just basically pull up the mix. So for the rest of the song, pull it down to zero. And this is where it came in, come in. So let's make a new MIDI clip and let's draw in some cool MIDI riff that will sound well. Like tom tom to dum tom tom to dum tom tom, something like this. Yeah, something like this would would be cool. But maybe drop it up one octave higher. But it sounds so weird without side chaining. So what I want to do here is apply side chaining to this sound. Now you can do this in the group, but what I prefer is using custom side chains for different sounds. So this is why I'm about to draw in custom shapes. Okay, and it is a lot easier to control D the whole thing. And one more thing, let's try to add some pitch bend to it or a pitch drop effect, like all the way to the end. So something like this. Okay, but for that, we need to modify the pitch bend range like always. I'd like to set all of my presets to two octaves. So it is a lot easier to uh, customize everything because everything will sound well with the other. Okay, and to make it more interesting, let's automate this thing. So pull back the, the base on this thing when we get to the end. So the lower the pitch gets with uh, pitch automation, the less bass I want to have. So... Now we need to pull it a little higher and decrease the resonance. So this way we should get a fully killed low end or not it won't it won't kill it perfectly but it definitely makes it a lot better to sound and maybe pull it a little back yeah something like this okay that's cool we can copy this
we will have to make some changes here, like shotgun effects or machine gun effects or something like that that Joylight loves to use, but let's do that in the next video.